I'm going to talk to you. I, I put this together, this, this presentation, last night about 1 o'clock in the morning after multiple <laughs> shots of bourbon. So I have, I have no idea if this is going to be coherent. I was, just, I was desperately trying to go through it and make sure I knew what I was going to talk about. This could be embarrassing for me, you, uh, and the Microsoft people should probably cover their eyes. <laughs> so I call it. Um, and this is a tribute to Kent. Where are you, Kent? We won't let it get back to Redmond, don't worry. OK, excellent. We're just, we're just recording it all. So um, um, I Yes. Ah. Um, this is um, tin cupping for plutonium. Uh, and, and I'll explain what that means in a little bit. So, um, and uh, which is also, I subtitled, or how I learned to stop worrying and to love the mothership. Uh, and it's really a story of, of, of tyranny from below, um, which is another thing that was talked about earlier about how we can um, influence one of the biggest corporations in the world to do some really wonderful stuff uh, in, uh, for, for, to illuminate our combined cultural heritage. So this is my to-do list, kind of typically. I've sort of tried to, to really reduce this down to, to what I, I think I'm expected to do in my role. Um, make corporation happy, uh, make universities happy, make world happy. Uh, <laughs> Happy. <laughs> That's what I do. Um, Non-trivial exercise. Uh, so this is a short story about one recent exercise in trying to, to accomplish those three things that I think was reasonably successful. I was hanging out with uh, Brett at the NEH and asking him about the cool projects that he thought we could help work with. And he told me about USC and the, uh, and the quilt. I won't go into details and kind of told you about its dimensions and, and the scope of that project. It was a really amazing project. Um, she was working with the University of Iowa. Uh, I brought Brown into it. We had, um, I, I managed to beg Brown and Steele about $50,000 and got four Surface units donated, or sorry, device formerly known as Surface, now the Samsung SUR40 with Microsoft PixelSense. <laughs> Rolls off the tongue. Rolls off the tongue. Uh, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Very difficult. So um, this was an interesting crowd of people. We had we had a lot of resources. I think we had the stuff we needed to make this happen. Um, we also had eight weeks to, to do this. Like, oh wow, okay. But we had a secret weapon. Um, it was interesting. This is this is uh, and this is my first time using this, and it's a it's a resource I'm hoping to use some more. Um, it's called the garage, and this is the actual. Uh, motto of the garage, apparently. Although, funny enough, we don't censor this, but when people write articles about us, they censor this. So I don't know why. I, I just this this word is apparently very offensive. Um, but the garage, just so you. <laughs> funny. Um, yeah, one of these words. So so the garage. For those of you who don't know, the garage is is essentially our version of 20% time. I guess we we had a. Um, there was a desire to with a lot of employees, I mean 80,000 employees in, in Redmond alone, uh, and, and doing all kinds of little side projects. We want to try to encourage that kind of thing. And uh, at first, this was very in, in ad hoc. We, we basically uh, uh, bought them pizza and, and encouraged them to hang out together in spaces. Pizza was sort of like the, the magnet that attracted them. Uh, and, and recently, though, it's, it's really become uh, uh, an official thing. So we have a couple PMs who are actually dedicated to this group. We have a building, Building 4, beautiful, beautiful building uh, that, uh, uh, that sort of houses these projects, um, all kinds of events and things. And, and there's a mailing list where basically I can reach out to about 6,000 employees in the company and, and say, hey, do you guys want to do something cool? And that's what I did. I told them about the quilt. I had um, about 15 people. Uh, you know, uh, answered the, the, the call, the, the email. Three of them, three developers in DC, really were passionate about working on this. And, and they did some of the stuff that we did. Um, so just talking about logistics of trying to do something like this. So we have all this cool stuff. Um, and then we also added Berkeley and um, Moscow State University, uh, who are working. Moscow is the one who are developing a platform we have called ChronoZoom. Uh, in Berkeley as well. And so it was like we got them all in, in you know, communication with each other. And, and USC was like passing uh, the images from the quilt to the garage. And then the garage pushed it up into the cloud and gave the access back to USC, who then pushed it to University of Iowa, 
um, and we pushed it over to Brown University as well, who started pushing prototypes and design conversations to, to USC, who were then throwing it over at the Names Foundation, and this was just like, oh my god. But it worked. Um, and I don't know how it worked. I, but we produced three really interesting uh, pieces of technology. The first was AIDS Quilt Touch, which was uh, the, the mobile website and also this um, SUR40 uh, prototype, which I can't demo, unfortunately, because these things don't fit in my pocket. And then the uh, ChronoZoom timeline, which um, I really, have, who has seen ChronoZoom? A couple, a few people. So this is a, this is an HTML5 uh, platform. It's all released completely open source. And I'm just going to show you really, really quick if I can remember how to do this. There we go. Um, and it lets you, it lets you browse through, through time and, and tell stories through time. And I think this is just one of the really cool technologies that are starting to come out of our company. So this is ChronoZoom. We'll see there. So this is a 30-year history of AIDS with the AIDS quilt embedded in it. Um, you, can, you have this idea of these info dots. And this is all cross-platform. So this will run on your iPads and various stuff. You can embed just about anything that is, is embedded in HTML inside of here. Um, you can, I think, let's see if I can go in. Internet's being a wee bit slow. Uh, but you get this ability to create these curated. Um, you can also do, uh, you can create tours with audio. So this one doesn't have audio, but essentially it's, it's a slideshow. So you can kind of go through and you can move from, from one space to the other. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's a neat project. I won't, I don't, I'm not here to demo crap to you, though. So I'll just I'll let you explore it at your own. You can go to aidstimeline.org and check it out. Um, we also did this Bing Maps prototype, which this thing is also um, runs on the Bing Maps API. Uh, and let me see if I can find it. There. And this really let us, for the first time, stitch the quilt together. And if you go to research.microsoft.com slash aidsquilt, and this thing was great because we didn't, I, this thing will work on your iPhones. Um, this will, in fact, the experience on, on a pinch and zoom, it all works and everything. This is the quilt. Um, we can zoom out here a little bit, and you can start to see kind of the, the scope of this thing. Uh, but you can essentially, it doesn't work really great with my mouse here, but you can go right in to any of these pieces. Um, this was actually, this was just created by the garage team in like three days, I think. And it was ultimately one of the most popular aspects of the, because it was so um, ubiquitous. It could be used on any device. So that was really, really good. Um, so we created these things. We went to the mall. Um, we, we, Anne and I and her graduate students and various other people uh, endured uh, like 100 degree plus weather, uh, sweltering heat, um, hung out, talked to people. Um, there was rain alternating with the, with the blistering heat. There was um, just amazing experiences, very, very cool. Uh, a lot of people coming together. I mean, and, and some of this, you know, I mean, this was really, we were helping people to identify, to find names, to identify, to either look at the virtual version or actually find where on the physical mall that, because everything was cross-indexed with the, the actual pieces around the mall. So helping people to, to visit these pieces of the quilt that they had, some of them not seen in 25 years. Um, and then this was, we had the, the surface exhibition as well. So uh, I learned, I, I came up with this formula. Um, just talking about collaborations and one of the unknown dangers of it. Uh, this is, uh, so um, possible, pos probability of misattribution <laughs> is number of collaborators <laughs> divided by one over interviews um, multiplied by your technology market capitalization rank. <laughs> so, which in, in the case of our, um, in case of our, our experiment, actually this is a little bit wrong, but we'll just go with it. So five, 10, two, which is like 100. So since one is unity, this is like 10,000% chance. Um, and this is something we ran to over and over and over again, was, was uh, people not getting the facts right. And I learned a lot about how journalists just don't listen to you. It's, I don't believe anything anymore. Um, but we did get a lot of press for this, uh, which was really, really cool. Um, a lot of people talked about this. And it was a way of really you know, 
uh, uh, raising awareness about AIDS and HIV and, and also about the role that all these different folks had had in, in trying to make these things happen and the importance of digital humanities. So after I was done with this, my, my corporate masters were like, good job, do it again. Uh, so, um, and that's sort of how life is like for me. So I'm um, just talking about that a little bit. Uh, tried to come up with a formula for how to, how to um, reproduce this. And I'm currently trying to, trying to reproduce it now. And if you want to come along on this merry adventure, you're more than welcome to. So the formula I have is that you need um, deep data, which um, is, is kind of like big data, but it's, it's not just like big data sets. It's meaningful data sets. I think it's really important for us to look at things like the quilt that are um, culturally significant that, that have uh, a lot of um, you know, resonance with, with the world. Um, we need passionate partners. We really have to have people who are doing it because it's something they, they absolutely believe in, um, not because we're just like, they're, they're trying to find a way to get money for their department. Um, terrific technology. Uh, and, and this is, you know, I'm very agnostic. I, I want things to be ubiquitous and work across platforms, but if we're going to leverage the expertise that Microsoft has, then it needs to be with our technology. Because, but, but consider that JavaScript and HTML5 are extremely important in the company right now. And there's a lot of people um, doing a lot of things with it. And then we need plutonium, which is you know, what we talked about at the beginning. Uh, and and <laughs> when I think of plutonium, um, really what I mean is, um, the, you know, and this is the stuff that I, I think can really supercharge these things. Uh, and it can take various different forms. So it could be um, free labor which is very useful. Uh, it could be um, other people's money, because I don't have a lot of it. And uh, so I, I look at, and that could be product groups or, or um, really generous foundations that give away like $2.5 million grants on a regular basis. And uh, <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I love you, Janet. Um, <laughs> We should talk. I was I was hunting you down in the aquarium, and I couldn't find you. I don't know what happened, but yeah. What? Uh, thanks. I'm more like a like a um, one of those things that kind of sucks, sits on the side of the. <laughs> but uh, yeah. Um, and you know, hardware donations. So we get a lot of things like phones and surfaces and various stuff if we can convince groups that what we're doing is meaningful to them. And we have to think about the the you know the 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 um, articulating these things in, in ways that make sense to the to the product groups and the groups within Microsoft. So they might be looking for publicity. They might be looking for more apps in the store. There's all kinds of different you know motivations they can have. Um, but we're just doing that because we want what they have. Uh, and then expertise and influence, which is not just within the company but outside. I mean, it's you guys and, and people who can help tell the story, help people make people aware of the story. I don't know why. There's like some kind of cloaking field around Microsoft that causes it to like, like when we first did our ChronoZoom stuff and we had um, uh, Walter Alvarez, really famous geologist, he gave um, Keystone lecture at, at Berkeley and, uh, and showed this just amazing demos of, of, of going through 13.7 billion years of time and we got coverage, but no one, they all mentioned Berkeley, but they never mentioned us. And in fact, one really prominent blogger who I won't name by name actually wrote and said, saw this amazing demonstration of t history and time at Berkeley with Walter Alvarez. Google should really do something like this. Um, and it was just like, really? I mean, is that like, does it increase your, like, key, your search ranking or something? It is? I don't get it. So, you know, and, and I know, and, and it was, Anne was so good about this. It, Anne, was, Anne was so good about this. Like, you, poor thing, you, you had to listen to us, like, be over the head and, and just be like, we're like, just, just say my name, say my name, you know, and, and it was like, <laughs> but it really, it really makes, it makes a difference. And, and the reason it makes a difference is because part of what we're trying to do is we're trying to really demonstrate something to, to Microsoft, to the corporation. We want to teach them that, that by doing these kinds of things, they're going to get more um, attention and, and more you know, positive karma than, um, than by doing a trade show and, and by handing people backpacks and stuff. And, and I'll get to that. Um, so that actually leads right into my aspirational 
to-do list. So this is not the things that I'm expected to do, but the things that I really want to do, um, which are uh, to culture jam Microsoft, which, um, yeah. I, yeah, boom, it's going to be good. And that's culture jamming in terms of you know trying to divert the, the traditional media streams into unanticipated directions. Uh, and uh, and I, it's lots of fun. Uh, generate international attention for ourselves, for our partners. And again, the reason why is because we want to demonstrate to the mothership that, that this is the most effective way they can use their resources um, so we can divert that flow of marketing dollars away from free backpacks and into uh, tremendous um, uh, um, thermonuclear text processing engines or whatever it is that we end up trying to create. Yeah, oh my god, what am I doing? See, I, I shouldn't do this at 1 o'clock in the morning, um, but I do have a point. And the point is that I want to do cool things with this group. I think this is just an absolutely tremendous group. We just have to, we have to scheme about how to do it. I want to like find some really like um, you know passionate and 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 deep pocketed government agencies who want to like want to want to partner with us and Is that more money than the government? No, I have more technology than the government. 